Okay, folks, let's uh, go ahead and get started inside After Effects and do the compositing part of our project. Now, uh, it's going to be really quick uh, I, because the image is uh, very vibrant and really great. So, uh, now this is the render that we have here. If I take a look at uh, and just as you can see, this is the pure render that we have, raw render basically, that uh, it's kind of loading those frames into. Just let's get back to the okay, guys. Let's just hit zero to cache those last frames, and we should be able to see it. There we go. Now, I'm not sure what's wrong. Let's see. There we go. Now, that's the render that we have here, and I think we have some playback problems, but uh, you know, you can see. Now these files, uh, I I'll be trying to actually provide you with this file, but uh, I hope you render your own files. Uh, but I will be providing you hopefully with these files, uh, not the high quality ones, but I'll be trying to provide you with some low quality. Now we're not going to be using all of this, but it's good to have as much as you need. Now let's go ahead and get started by putting this guy into a new uh, composition, create a composition based on that file and uh, let's see now uh, the first thing I did is to kind of focus the viewers attention uh, in these parts here you know there are a lot of colors up there these pictures and stuff like that and I just want to make sure these uh, are not going to get any sort of colors so what we're going to be doing is uh, to create a new adjustment layer and I'm going to just uh, name it CC Block White. Okay, that's the uh, first thing. And uh, let's go ahead and I'm just going to basically come here and select these parts so it doesn't have to be really accurate. Now, there we go. Turn off your caps lock if you have it on. And I'm just going to apply a simple uh, hue and saturation. There we go. I'm just going to double click on that and reduce the saturation to zero. And uh, you can see there is this uh, obvious line. I'm going to hit F and feather the mask a bit so they sort of. Uh, if I turn it on and off, I'm going to select the mask again and go ahead and move these guys is higher. There we go. Now that's the uh, first part of the uh, design here. Now the next thing I want to do is to go ahead and start working on my depth of field. So let's go ahead and put our uh, depth map here. So let's go ahead and get there. I'm going to just uh, uh, go ahead and type depth. And you can simply turn off the eye, create another adjustment layer. And this is going to be our uh, depth of field. And we're going to be using uh, the fresh loft or fresh loft depth of field. So a very famous plugin. So I'm going to just apply that, turn off caps lock. And I'm going to go to something like 7, 8. And here I can select the depth that I want, the shade that I want to be focused on. And make sure to choose the depth layer. Now, as you can see, uh, the focus is here. And there's a, uh, you know, the objects gets blurry get blurry as they uh, distance away from the camera now I want these parts to be much more in focus because uh, those uh, balls in uh, other room and their interaction is quite nice so I want to have that now for that you have to adjust your depth map so I'm going to select my depth map and control shift C and let's name it the uh, depth come to that is let's see okay just go inside that comp here and I'm just going to uh, create 
a new solid and uh, lack addition or whatever. And let's go ahead and make sure we have this black color here. That is great. Now I'm just going to turn off the eye for a moment where I'm creating the masks. And let's go ahead and basically choose this part to be in focus. Turn on the eyes and hit F. Go ahead and feather that a bit. Now we can simply go ahead and adjust this points so they sort of are more in focus. So something like that. Okay. Now if we get back to our main composition, you can see now these parts are in focus. And that's what we want, basically. Now, there we go. Now, I've done some compositing before you actually get here. Let me go here. I have, let's see what we did after that. Uh, yeah, the next thing uh, I'm going to do is to apply a bit of grain and noise here. So I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And I'm going to name this grain. And I put this guy uh, down here uh, below my depth of field. And I'm going to type uh, grain. And uh, there's this add grain that you can use. Or you can the, use the green uh, misfire grain from the magic bullet. But I'm just going to simply use uh, the add grain, uh, the native plugin in After Effects and I'm just going to uh, use one of these preset Kodak Vision uh, uh, and I think this last one 320T is a nice one for this matter and I'm just going to reduce the intensity to something really low to maybe 1.5 so if you turn it back on and let me just change the part where it's has the effects now if you see there is a bit of grain being added and I think that really helps uh, to sell the shot and I'm just going to change this to final output and that's uh, this one that I think is really necessary and important and let's see where we are here now Let's see what we added here. Sorry. Now we have added these. Uh, uh, yeah. The next thing, uh, I've added another adjustment layer. And that's going to be an overall color correction to basically reduce the saturation a bit. You know, I think it's too saturated. And let's just name it CC and again apply the hue saturation let's go ahead and apply that and I'm just going to reduce the saturation ever so slightly so you know it doesn't matter that much but I think if the colors are so vibrant it just uh, uh, it's not gonna feels right so I'm just going to just you can see how small this difference is but it's really important for me and uh, there we go and final thing let's go ahead and add a uh, we need effect I'm just going to create an ad another uh, sorry not an adjustment layer we're just going to create a solid layer and I'm just going to use uh, the same color and very very dark and let's actually rename it to vignette and let's go ahead and create a mask around the now it doesn't have to be um, just a bit more there we go something like that and I'm just going to Select the mask and subtract it. 
and uh, let's go ahead and feather it out. No, not that much. And I'm gonna expand it. So, let's see, maybe something very, very small. You can see the difference is quite there. And now this is where we are here. And I think, you know, it's really feel free and do whatever you want, but I think uh, it's not too bad for decompositing here. Now, uh, we're not gonna go through this uh, 2D part where the title comes here. Uh, if you saw the uh, kind of uh, motion design because uh, it's basically a really simple 2D motion design using masks inside After Effects so I'm not gonna waste your time for that but uh, generally speaking this is the design here and uh, uh, you know uh, I think uh, you need to kind of go here go and really try to composite your project after you've done 3D renders uh, raw 3D renders really uh, kind of needs to be really great. You know, in this example, the 3D render was so great, actually. The picture, the color, everything was so great. But uh, uh, generally speaking, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can't leave your 3D render as it is. You have to uh, go to your favorite compositing program, uh, After Effects, Nuke, F Fusion, or whatever it is, and really... Uh, try to uh, do something with them to make them more uh, more attractive and nice. So uh, yeah, this uh, was this tutorial and I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, uh, see you in our conclusion lesson.